What's going on, people? We're back again with another podcast. And today we've got Justin, who's uh, kindly offered to share his story with the audience and the channel today. So welcome, Justin. Hey, thank you for having me, Ricky. No problem. So um, the first question I kind of wanted to get into with yourself is, when did you kind of notice you were beginning to lose your hair? And what was your initial reaction to it? I say from the beginning, like growing up, even in childhood, I always had a hairline that was pretty high up. Okay. And I growing up, all my uncles on my mom's side of the family are all bald. All went bald in the twenties. So I, in the back of my head, I knew I was gonna go bald one day, but I didn't know it was gonna when? happen in high school. Yeah, in the early twenties. Okay, so it started. So, so you started noticing it predominantly in your early twenties, then. Yeah, absolutely. Like in let's see, in high school, I want to remember. I remember my sophomore year of high school. It was back in the day when people used to grow out of hair and do cornrows and. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. I said, hey, I used to have like a number one haircut. I said, hey, I'll try to grow my hair for about a couple of months. They probably only got to about maybe a three. Mm-hmm. And they said it was too short to braid. I said, uh, well, that sucks. I said, just stick to the, the number one all over. And then I remember specifically when I took my senior year picture, I noticed in the picture my hairline, the, the corners of it were a little pushed back a little bit. And I said, huh. Oh, Mm-hmm. It's kind of odd. Maybe the barber pushed it back a little bit, but eh, whatever. Do you think that? Do you think that deep down you might have known? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I was just in the beginning stage of denial because before I was just like, oh, it must be the barber. He must push my hairline back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing to worry about. But if I'm thinking back now, I'm like, yeah, I was in denial back in the beginning stages of it. Yeah, yeah, and you just don't realize you kind of make an excuse in your head that oh, maybe the barber did it, maybe, or oh, maybe I'm just having a bad hair day or whatever else. But when you dis- when you kind of got to that point where you realized it was a problem, how did you kind of react to it? Was was it were you quite was was it in a place where you were quite negative about it, or was it quite easy for you to embrace it in the initial stages? I think in the initial stages it was definitely negative and denial and. Uh... When I first recognized before, probably like around 21, 22, I moved over to uh, this part of Florida and Tampa with my dad. Mm-hmm. And barber shops wasn't that much popular over there, so I just used to cut my own hair. Okay. I noticed that I used to always cut it down to a great zero because I was like, man, I, every time I cut my head, I always got to move it back further and further with my head. I said, man, something's, something's wrong with that. But I said, now I'm thinking back. I said, yeah. Einstein, your hairline's receding. <laughs> so it was like, it, 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 it literally managed to progress all in that time. So how long were you out there in that time when it was progressing? Was it like within a few months or? It was definitely, I moved out there when I was 21 and it progressed all the way from 21 to all the way to 24 when I okay. left. Okay, so those three so years are where. So those, so those three years are where it just went overboard and it just, it kept going further and further and further back. Oh, absolutely. It seemed like every, it seemed like every year it just kept going further, further back. Mm-hmm. So about 24 when I joined the, uh, went to the, I don't know if you want to get to the part with the boot camp and military when I was 24. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I went through it. I remember my just started, we used to get haircuts every two weeks. I remember my just started, the barbershop was close about at least about three or four months. And we mm-hmm. all grew our hair out. I remember him cutting my hair. He said, man, you have a, your hairline is messed up. Your hairline is all the way to the back of your forehead. I said, oh. <laughs> Wow, no mercy whatsoever. No whatsoever. Just brutal honest. I remember looking at the mirror. That's when I, I was like, looked in the mirror. I said, oh, man, I see my hairline really was seen in the back. And that's when that negative mindset was just every morning I used to wake up, go in the mirror. And, and you'd always be looking. The, yep. That's the worst part where you're at that stage where you're constantly looking in the mirror, constantly looking in a car window when you're walking down the street, like, you know. Has it progressed any more? Is it receding any more further back? And I think that's the point where we realize, shit, this is something we have to either fix or accept at some in some form. But yeah, man, I've been there. But did you ever kind of contemplate any sort of procedures, hair transplants, anything like that? Oh, absolutely, man. Because in a, my community, the, unfortunately, the black community, they were obsessed with hairlines. You know, that's the, you know, see LeBron James and my fourth hairline. Mm-hmm. Every time you think of someone like a black figure, they always talk about the hairline, the hairline, they're obsessed with hair. Mm-hmm. So when I noticed that, I got home, I didn't make it to boot camp. I remember I got home early, got hurt. I remember going home, looking up hair, transplant, 
I looked at S and P. I looked at Minoxidil. I said, man, I got to do something about this, man, because I'm tired of waking up in the morning, worried about it in the mirror, mm -hmm. going out in the public, looking in park, car windows about it. Mm -hmm. I remember I looked at that extensively. I didn't go through it or anything. I didn't get in a phone call test or anything, but I remember looking up how much the hair, hair transplant would call for S&P, mm -hmm. or looking at Minoxidil or Finasteride. Actually, I don't want to get too far ahead, but I remember I tried Minoxidil back in 2018, the end of 2018. This was after I shaved my head. I remember I was looking at it, kept showing commercials about Minoxidil. I remember I went to Walmart, mm -hmm. got a bottle of Minoxidil, it was probably about 30 bucks. I remember okay. spraying it, spraying it before work in the morning. After I got done working out like 6 a.m., and I sprayed the corners of it. I remember looking at myself in the mirror, just feeling like kind of pathetic. I was like, really? I said, I grew up my hair up for about two months. Mm -hmm. Hair's looking a mess. I said, do I really want to do this? I said, why do I care? I remember just what just drove to work about 10 minutes away. When I saw it, we were right in the trash can. And the whole day, the whole day at work, I'm just thinking, I said, man, I just feel, I, said, I can't believe I stuck that low. I said, why do I feel like I have to do something about something that I have no control over? Exactly. And that's, yeah. I think at least, I think at least you hit that moment of realization there. But you said that um, you shaved your head and then you tried it. Yeah, I did. Because I shaved my head back in, this was a 20, in the 2016. Mm-hmm. I actually shaved my head because I had, uh, my mom got remarried. I remember with the wedding. I think I grew my hair out for about two weeks before the wedding. Okay. Took the pictures. And then they see my hairline at a, at a grade zero. I just remember looking at it. I said, man, this looks pathetic. I remember went home after that, got a razor, a wet razor, and just. <laughs> went for it and you stuck with it ever since. Yep. And I remember the next day I went to uh, college. I was, I was worried. I thought, oh, man, what is a classmate going to think about it? Yeah. I mean, the next one, I hold, I'm just excited. I said, oh, man, I wonder what they're going to say about it. So I'm ready for the ball jokes. I get the campus walking around. No one's saying anything. Everyone's just, hey, how you doing, Justin? I'm no like, one paid no mind. <laughs> nope. I said, what? I got a classroom. Hey, how's it going? My family member, I said, you guys, the only thing, this is up, I shaved my head. Oh, it looks nice. Um, so anyways. <laughs> wow. That, that, go, that goes to show as well. People are so absorbed in their own lives and they're so self-centered anyway. I mean, everyone's got their own insecurities that they're worrying about. So we always think when we step out the house, embracing our own insecurities, people are instantly going to notice. And like you said, they're going to make bald head jokes or whatever else, but they're absorbed in their own issues. So I think that's what a lot of guys don't realize in this position people have so many issues of their own, they're not really going to give a crap about what we're going through. They've got their own problems to deal with. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It's just, it's just like in the grand scheme of life, it's not a big deal at all. It's just for sure. I remember, I was, I was, I remember I was, after I went home after school, I said, man, why am I stressed about stuff that no one cares about? I said, I've spent the whole day with anxiety about worrying about what people are think about it. I said, as long as I'm confident in the look, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Exactly. It's interesting because you kind of went through something similar to myself. I mean, you said you shaved your head and then you kind of went through this journey where you grew it back. You tried to take some sort of medication to, you know, regrow it or make it look a little bit better. And I had the same story with, my, with myself. I shaved my head, absolutely hated the look. And then I ended up using hair fibers. You know, you get those powders similar to what you yeah. use. And I use that uh, in the same effort to try and make it look like I had a perfect hairline, but it looked ridiculous. And then you've got the worry every time you step out, <laughs> is it going to rain? Is there, is something wet going to touch my head? And then it's just going to be a case of my hairline's <laughs> dripping down my face. It's, <laughs> and, it, and it does make you feel pathetic. So I completely understand what you must have been feeling in those moments. Well, absolutely. Yeah, man, it's going through and then. And I knew back then I was like, I remember we went home, I took the same day I took the monoxide and went home, got a razor, cut my hair. I said, man, I said, this is my fondest kiss. I said, I'm never going to do anything to regrow it. No hair transplant or nothing. I said, I'm just going to settle in this look and just control the things I control in my life. I said, hair growth or anything like that, stuff that you, that's out of your control. I'm just going to rock with it mm -hmm. and do what I can in life and just focus on those things in life. And I think that's a major thing for a lot of guys. They don't realize that in the grand scale of things, it's only hair. It's only hair at the end of the day. There's so much more to this thing we call life. There's so much more to us as people. 
And there's so much more that we could give our energy towards. And it is crazy how much energy we end up giving towards something that's so small and insignificant at the end of the day, because we, we end up letting it rule us. And I think that's a dangerous thing. But did uh, any, obviously you said in terms of campus and your friends, they didn't really have any negative reaction. What about your family? Did they kind of have any, you know, negative comments or did they poke fun at you or anything? Uh, I've had, I don't, I don't remember none of my family poke fun or anything, but not my mom, not my stepdad, not my cousin or anything. Nobody really. I, I remember, I remember one coworker. I was already, this was, I was already bought before I got the job. Mm-hmm. I remember she, she coming on my hair, she coming on uh, my head. They should joke about that. So I used to have a nice shaped head for it. <laughs> but I was like, all right, that's cool. So they kind of took that, a little just, dig. Yeah, they did. But other than that, they really didn't care because they just, I remember I got one or two questions about, asked about why I shaved my head. I said, oh, I just started losing my hair. I said, well, how old are you? I said, I was 26 at the time. Oh, it's pretty young. I used to have But then it is what it is. It runs in my family. I just took action and just saved it. And after that, no comments whatsoever. No, no for family or anything. I think that's one of the fears as well for guys when, when they're losing their hair in either their teens or their 20s. That's like the way the media portray it as well. It's like a death sentence. If you lose your hair in your 20s, the media are going to portray it like your life is over. And... It's far from the case. It's far from the case, and you know whether it's myself, whether it's you, whether it's anyone else who's gone through this journey of embracing their hair loss. I think more than more times than not, we've shown that that is not the case. That we can still go on to live a fulfilling life, to have a dating life, to have a successful career. It's never going to be a case of no hair, no life. There's always going to be life at the end of it. But um, in terms of how you perceived hair loss before you went through it, so. Before you shaved your head, how did you kind of perceive hair loss yourself? I mean, obviously now you perceive it in a way where you've got control over your life, but how did it feel in those moments before you shaved your head? Did you perceive it more in a sense that this is going to be the end? How did you kind of feel in that regard? Well, I did. I've had that before. But I always thought hair loss, oh, it's just, a, it's just something old guys go through. You get older in life. I said, oh, it just happens when you're, when you're 40 to 50 to 60. It happens in life, I said. Guys in their 20s, I said, man, that's kind of early to be losing your hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not going through my mind that, hey, I'm going to lose my hair one day. Before, I was like, oh, I said, hey, when I'm 30 or 40, growing up, I said, I look at my hair like 15. I said, eh, probably when I'm 35 or 40, that's when it really starts to hair loss take over. But in my mind, I was just so delusional. It's like, oh, I'm too, early. I'm too young. I'm 19 years old. I'm too young to lose, lose my hair, right? <laughs> yeah, you're still, you're still going to be having like those perfect lineups all the way till you're 40 and <laughs> you're in your head. <laughs> And I was the same. I mean, I was a bit, I was a bit of a pretty boy when I was 18, 19. I used to have, you know, this typical Asian kind of Asian kid hairstyle, spiky hair, short, short on the sides and back. And I thought this is going to be me till at least 35, even though all this shit here was just completely gone, (laughs) completely thinning. I was using at one point, this is quite embarrassing to say, but before I tried hair fibers, I would use a literal crayon, a black crayon, and covering the parts of my scalp where I no longer could grow hair. That's how ridiculous it got at one point. And it's just, it's just crazy when you think back to it. It is, but that's, that's how society is, though. That's society, especially when you're, you're growing up. I was the same way. I was 18, 19 years old, looking at books about how to get pee away. I thought, I'm this pretty boy. I'm going to get all the women and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so, so superficial, but that's how, that's how society it is. It's in, a, in the media, for sure. Yeah, exactly. You have this, but you have this kind of feel in your head that you know, if you lose something like hair in your twenties and your teens, that's it. Your dating life is over. I think that's one of the main things. But would you say, in that regard, you've had any effect? Would you say it's affected like your personal life, your dating life, the way relationships have gone for you? I know that's a little personal, so if you don't want to go too into it, that's fine. But would you say it's had any impact since you've shaved your head? Well, absolutely, yeah, it's not too personal at all. I'm, I'm an honest person, but I believe it's definitely had a definitely impact, great impact in my relationships and dating and in my personal life as well. Dating, when I moved out to Tampa, even when my hairline was receding out there, I was still having success with women because guys think it's just, guys think it's just all about looks when it comes to women. But when it comes to women, it's about how confident you are, what you're doing in your life, how masculine you are, how are you funny. More than your looks go, more 
more than looks when it comes to women. That's what I learned out there as well. Because I was out there kind of <laughs> working out seven days a week and probably 80% of the time I'm getting rejected. I was either came off needy, clingy, or way too nice, but mainly because the clingy and needy part. Of mm-hmm. course, it looks mad to a certain extent, but past that, that threshold of it, you still got to be confident. You still got to have stuff going on in your life, have goals. And I got... Actually, I like this conversation plenty of times. So, but now I'm way more confident in myself. I'm older, I'm more mature. I'm not definitely not super as I was before. Mm-hmm. I know that two of the the women I date now that I was before. Before I all care about was oh how pretty she looks, how long her hair is, how this. Now I'm like, is this something I can get along with? Is she goal oriented? Is this something that you can have a great time with? That's what guys are when they get older. They start to realize that boy, you hit 19 to 20. You just think about oh how how big girls body parts are and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And that's so valuable to know as well that, you know, it's it's such a valuable thing that you've said there in the sense that, you know, even just going through this hair loss journey, you kind of grow as a person, your maturity changes as well. You become more of a mature person because you realize, you know, okay, maybe I've lost my hair. That's one thing out of 10 things. I've still got nine other things that I can work on, whether it be, you know, my ambitions in life, whether it be, you know, as you said, a sense of humor with a woman always goes a long way. There's so many other things that guys can focus on, but you know, you'll see it in YouTube comments. For example, you go, you go to any one of my videos, you'll see guys just so negative they'll be saying to other guys in the comments who've probably come there for encouragements they're saying to them oh you know you've lost your hair that's it you're never going to get a woman again you're never going to be able to succeed in life again and they just paint this betrayal that's so ridiculous but it goes to show doesn't it that it isn't the truth yeah it's not it's just it's always just you know all the time it's just i just feel i just feel bad for those guys where they just think it's life is all about how you look how you this is like your look's going to say no matter what you get older, you get it. It's like, you got to have something sustainable in life. You got to have goals. For sure. If you want to, uh, let's say if you have kids one day, it's like, you don't want to have a, a superstition mind that, that's all about looks. And it's like, at the end of the day, you spend 30 or 40, most of the guys can lose their hair anyway. Exactly. That's just a fact of life. Exactly. I think hair loss as well. It, for a lot of guys, especially for like myself and yourself who lost their hair in their 20s, I think it can be that first sign that we're, we're not Superman, we're mortals, we're, we're mortal human beings. And slowly but surely, we're going to lose all these physical traits one by one over the years. And it's a good point that you even said, pass, these are the things that we don't want to pass on to our kids. We don't want to pass on that these things matter that much it should be about developing your character because those are the things that are going to last when all these visual traits that we have disappear. And I totally agree with you there. Absolutely. That's the mindset they have. But unfortunately, we live in a society where it put Instagram, Instagram models on a pedestal. This, this girl, the Kardashian, stuff like that. No offense to them, but just how much the society just thinks about the beauty, girls, so insecure, they don't have the biggest but anything like that, guys got to have the perfect hairline, they got to have six-pack ass, they got to have it all, they got to have a nice car and stuff like that. And I just, just shake my head. I'm like, in 30 years, people are not going to care how much hair you had, how many rock car ass you had, how, how nice your car was. What mm-hmm. people matter the most of the day is how many people you helped while you were on Earth, how many other leaders you created as well. That's what I love about your channel. You help a lot of guys, you give value to other guys that, hey, hair, losing hair, Hey, that's just a part of life for most guys. But with this stuff, way more more things in life than losing your hair. Exactly. And that's that's such a good point as well in terms of like, you know, we do live in that Instagram generation where everything has to be perfect. I mean, we get shown images and posts of probably one or two percent of the entire Earth's population, people who have the most perfect physical traits and we'll be taught that's the norm. That's something that we need to pursue. That's normal. And it's far from the truth. Nobody, nobody's always going to have that perfect head of hair. No one's ever going to, you know, it's just ridiculous how they kind of portray it in that sense. But I totally agree. We are in that superficial, you know, generation in this case. And you've made a good point in that regard that we need to stop chasing that because it's not, it's not feasible. It's not everlasting. There's so many other things that we can carry as people. And 
like you said as well, when we're in the grave, no one's going to remember how big, big someone's butt was. No one's going to remember, you know, <laughs> the hairline that you had or the six pack that you had. It's going to be what you stood for in life that actually mattered, how you carried yourself as a person. And I think that's what a lot of guys don't realize. But I think the get, they'll realize that though. When they're 20 or 21, I was the same way. I didn't think about long term at all. I was the big kid. Oh, I'm gonna look, I gotta look perfectly. I gotta look like I gotta look like this. Thinking that's gonna attract women in the short term, yes, but in the long term, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna keep them maintain the woman's interest at all. Mm-hmm. If you're just a superficial guy, a nice looking guy with no goals, no ambition in life. What I liked as well, what you said is how your kind of taste in women managed to uh, progress after you lost your hair. Obviously, when you said you were younger, you know, you went for what every young guy goes for, you know, the big chest, big butt, whatever else, and, you know, the perfect face. But then as you grow older and as you realize that these things are just going to be things that we're going to lose over time, these visual traits, they're not going to last forever. And that's when you even develop that sense that maybe I should be going for different things than women as well. So it's good even just going through something like hair loss. It teaches you that, you know, there's other traits to even women out there. You know, I shouldn't just be going for the pretty face. There's so many other things that can be attractive and things that are more everlasting as well. Absolutely. It's like, you I say these guys made a mistake to see the Instagram models. It's like, it's like, guys, you would really just eat Guys, it's like you really want the mother to treat your child. If you put in that kids one day, you want you want the mother to treat the child just to be a woman that looks good. She don't have any integrity, no honest and stuff like that. It's like wow. It's like trust. I said I, I tell these guys. I said we hit my age, twenty seven. I'll be twenty eight next month. Twenty seven, twenty eight. You start realizing like mature. Stop thinking with this head and thinking with this head. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, se- the second head per se stops taking over the thoughts. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Did you ever take any other, I know you said about the minoxidil, did you ever take any other kind of extreme measures to cover up the fact you were losing your hair before you shaved it? Were there any other measures you took to kind of hide it? Uh, I, was, I, was, I used to be a hat guy. That's another one. I used to be a, wear hats all the time. Definitely used to wear hats as much as I can. I used to just wake up in the morning. Just Make it like it's a normal thing. Yep. It's about the end of 2016, so it's cool. It was close about a month or two away before I shaved my hair. I used to wear hats all the time. And whenever I used to shave my head, I used to always walk around, face coming with my hairline. I still had a sound. I used to do it all the time, be puff of gas. Just <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny to think about it now. I was just, wow. But that's how I was in my before. Like a car, someone walked by, comb my hair. Yeah, how's it going, man? <laughs> oh, it's hot! It's hot, man. Sweating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Walk I mean, away. I, just... <laughs> I was a big hat guy, and this was kind of after I shaved my head. I mean, I kind of, even though I'd gone ahead and shaved my head, it still took me about a year to be able to accept the fact that I don't have to be walking out the house with a cap on every single time I leave the house. You know, I don't always have to, because I remember at times it would be a case of I'd have a woolly hat on in the summer, and it's. 27 degrees outside celsius and i'm there with a woolly hat on looking ridiculous and people are thinking why is he wearing a woolly hat it's boiling there's no need to be wearing a hat so i was definitely a hat guy myself in that regard oh yeah it's so easy to just throw a hat on pick as many as you can just and some people go on for years like that wearing hats all the time but i think and then after that i'm just tired of wearing hats it's like i think i own like maybe like one hat now which i really wear the more confident yourself, I said, the more you shave your head, it takes time. Guys think you're just supposed to shave your head. The next day you wake up confident. I said, no, it's a lifelong. I really started shaving my head back in 2017. I've been three years now I've been shaving my head. And now each year I became more confident in myself. Mm-hmm. That's what I tell guys. Shave your head. It takes time to be confident to get to the new look. A year or two later, you're not even going to care about it. you just be like right now, honestly, I just shave my head by every other day. I just wake up in the morning. I don't think about it. Oh, oh got to shave my head. Shave my head. Move on with life. All right, what's the next thing I got to do in life? Next thing exactly. I got to do in my day. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. It opened your eyes to that. The fact that it doesn't matter. That it doesn't matter that you've lost your hair. You've got other things that you can focus on and put your energy towards. But um, I remember myself with my hats. The best way I can probably put it is, I was putting on my hat before my socks, man. That's that's how it got <laughs> at points, and. You know, you feel naked without the hat. And I think that's what a lot of guys go through as well. They got this kind of feeling that 
after they've shaved their head, they feel a bit naked. They feel like, you know, they look in the mirror and they feel like something's missing. And I think the best thing I can say for any guys who are watching this as well is that's completely natural. I mean, it's normal to feel that way. I mean, like you said, it's been three years for yourself and it's took you year by year to slowly but surely feel, feel more confident. And I think that's something that a lot of guys can take away, can, you know, take value from that you will get that confidence, but it's going to take a few months. It might even take years, but it will come because you're getting to know a new person in the mirror, basically. Absolutely. And it's just like, I totally understand what I'm doing because like I, I had, as long as I used to get my hair, by grade one. I, I can't imagine how guys used to have long flowing hair and go from that to losing it. So I can't imagine that. So it's like, I understand what those guys are going through. I said, just shave your head, stick to it. But years from now, you won't even worry about it anymore. It's just sure. a thing. You're like, oh, you're bald? Oh, yeah, I just, hey, that's what, that's just what I am. Exactly. It's like you said, when you were at that workplace and that guy took a, made that sort of negative comment and you shot him down very well. I mean, what it, what is it that you said? You kind of told him that, you know, yeah, so what? I'm bold. I mean, so what? <laughs> it's not a big deal. Yeah, yep. I said, yeah, it is what it is. He said, oh man, you, yeah, you're pretty young to be bald. I said, hey man, I said, that's part of life. I mean, you lose your hair. It don't matter what age you are, you can lose your hair. Mm -hmm. That's just who I am. I remember just thinking, he just said, oh, cool. Turn around and talk to someone else. I said, all right. <laughs> life goes on exactly he didn't know what to say because he probably thought that you would be in a place where you're like oh yeah shit let me just cover cover it all up but it's the fact that he was probably taken aback by the fact you were confident and you know that's a beautiful thing when you can actually just go out there and be like you know what this is who I am I'm confident about it and it doesn't matter if I'm 21 or 41 I am who I am and there's way more to me than a hairline at, at the end of the day absolutely I think I learned that it's tough skin when I went to the, uh, halfway through the boot camp. The guys just comment, other recruits just comment about how my teeth were not, teeth were not straight. They're currently not straight now, but I remember guys just comment on it. In my mind, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, why do you care about another guy's teeth? And my, but I was like, oh, it's whatever. I said, yep, these are my teeth. They move on. And that's how I think I got developed this skin where you just, you just stop caring what other people think. And you just, you know who you are as a person. You know the things you can change your life. You can stop worrying about other people think things about it because someone else's opinion is just that their opinion. For sure. I mean, that just kind of kind of goes out. Of, that kind of just shows how insecure they are at the end of the day. If they've yeah. got to look at another man's hair, teeth, whatever it may be, and make a negative comments about it, it's it's just stupid. I mean, you get guys like that in the gym as well. You get guys who will work out every day of their life because they're worried about what other guys are going to comment. Oh, your biceps are looking a bit small today. You know, oh, you ain't got that separation in your chest today. You know, you ain't hitting the gym <laughs> enough. And this is shit that half the time women won't even care about, but it will just be guys against guys who are just trying to put each other down. It's, it's quite sad in that sense. Yeah, it is. And I think most women too push that set. Other guys judge other guys on the look. I've never had I never had women comment on my teeth. I never had women comment on my hairline, even when it was receding. I always, I always had other guys comment on it for some reason. I'm, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm like, no sense. I'm not attracted to the man. I don't care what another guy thinks about exactly. my hairline, my teeth, my body. It's like, what, why need, why are you commenting on it so much? I mean, it's just it's just stupid at the end of the day. I mean, it, it goes to show as well. Like you said, when it came to you know who you're actually interested in, in this case, women, they didn't make any comments. You weren't going to be sitting there on a date and, you know, you're kind of there and you're kind of sitting there and they're like, oh, what's going on with your biceps? They're looking a little small today. <laughs> you know, you know, you ain't got that uh, separation in your chest going. What's going on with the abs? I can see, I can see a bit of a belly flab coming through the t-shirt. You're never going to get a woman <laughs> say that kind of stuff unless she's extremely horribly superficial. In that case, you need to get the hell out of there anyway. It's, it's just crazy. But I agree in that sense. You do get guys, for some reason, they tend to put down other guys a lot a lot in life. And I think that just goes to show we've got a lot of insecure guys out there, unfortunately. But hopefully that will change over time. You know, I like to think that going through things like hair loss certainly opens the doors to realizing I need to be focusing on less superficial things. That was certainly the case for me. It may it opened my eyes to the fact that I'm I'm not going to be here forever. These things that I have on the outside, they're going to go one day. 
And I need to make sure I've got more to my character, more to me than a hairline or a good body or whatever else. Absolutely. It's, it's, guys think it's, guys think it's a short-term view and it's like, we go to hair loss in the long term. It's great for us because we're already, we're already building more substance as the stuff as a man. We got stuff going on. Because guys right now in their mindset thinking they got to look, I got to look like a model of 24-7. And 10 years from now, when it looks like the fade, then I got anything to fall back on. Because sure. they're really about the look. That's when they start getting hair transplant surgery and stuff like that. It's all, all they got is just looks. Mm-hmm. In the long run, that's not going to last at all. When you're 45 or 50 and your hairline starts to recede or you start to get gray hair, your looks not going to matter. Exactly. Would you agree with people who get hair transplants in any sh- any way, shape, or form? Or are you more against it in that sense? I think kind of like 50, 50. Like, I understand how some people get it. Like, I would have recommend a guy to. I would recommend a guy to shave your head and move on with life. But I understand how guys get it. If it bothers them that much. Yeah. The head chance to get it. I tell them that. I say, if you want to get S&P or Minoxidil, that's it. If you, if you want to go down that route, then you would. Mm-hmm. They have had it. But at least shave your head first. At least see if you can live with, like, live with that at first. Exactly. If you're still bothered by hair loss, then go ahead and head transplant. I say be careful about it. Mm-hmm. There's no easy to get a head transfer SMP or Minoxidil. Always in a, most of the guys that I, I talked to that have hung out with, guys that had a hair transplant, five to ten years from now, they end up shaving their head anyway. So guys even, get SMP, mm-hmm. it fades. So there you go. It just kind of goes to show that even if you go down those routes, you might just end up there anyway. You might end up where we've we're we're almost taking a shortcut in that sense that we're just embracing it early into our youth and we can live the rest of our lives without ever having to stress about it again, where it's not even a guarantee that if you get a hair transplant or SMP that you're going to be confident, you might get it and then you end up hating it. And then you've got to ask yourself what, but I like the fact that you said that try shaving your head first and then maybe get a hair transplant because at least you've given yourself that, reassurance that you tried it you you know in your head that i did everything i could now i'll get a hair transplant but i would say even then you know me personally if i ever did get a hair transplant not that i'm going to but if i ever did i would say the best thing would be shave your head learn to live without hair and then go on to get a hair transplant because at least then you're not reliant on it for your happiness you're just doing it out of choice. You're not doing it because you need it to be happy. It's not something that you're relying on, if that makes sense. Absolutely, that makes sense. That's, that makes total, perfectly sense by that because most guys get a haircut because they rely on their hair. Mm-hmm. And I tell those guys, who think that? I said, if you, if you go lose your hair, before I get, like for me, say for example, for me, if I got hair transplant one day, just because I grew hair on my head, my life's not going to change anymore. I'm not going to have women beating down my door. I'm not going to have a million dollars in a bank account. Nothing's going to change. I'm just going to have hair. That's how I think it is. It's not going to change. Unless you're a male model. Exactly. (laughs) And even then, you could be a bald male model. That's true, yeah. I mean, you get some good, you get some good looking bald men out there. I mean, we're, we're two of them right here. Let's just put it like that. (laughs) But yeah, it goes to show, I mean, guys do kind of have that perception that it's going to fix everything, that it's going to be like a movie montage, that hairline will appear and then <laughs> suddenly it'll be raining dollars and pounds. There'll be like women just pouring in. It, it's, it's not reality. It doesn't matter whether you have hair or don't have hair. That's not going to change that. And I think that's what a lot of guys need to realize that those things, those, you know, factors of success, whether it be, you know, earning money or finding a good woman, they can come regardless of whether you're a guy with hair without hair, or even if you're somewhere in between and you know, you're beginning to lose it, you can still get all those things. And it's kind of how you perceive yourself at the end of the day. Absolutely. And I think those guys like that who just think their hair is going to change, change their life. I think they watch too many. They got to stay on Instagram. They got to stay on Tinder so much. That's another one. Guys think on Tinder. Oh, I got I to gotta have a perfect hairline to be on Tinder to match the girls. And it's like, <laughs> that's just far from the truth. I said, Tinder is just <laughs> superficial. Tinder's the most superficial one, man. (laughs) Yeah, Tinder is definitely the most superficial app of them all because literally it's just, you're sitting there just scroll, 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 scroll. And it's like, I've never seen anything as much as 
uh, superficial as Tinder in that regard. I mean, at least with at least yeah. with Instagram, you can read a bit of their caption, or you know, they can write a little motivational post with it, even if they stole it for someone else. But <laughs> <laughs> Tinder just so I gotta ask girls in the bar. I gotta have a guy's gotta be at least six foot six. I have a perfect camera. He's gotta make a hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm like, gotta stay up. You gotta, gotta stay up Tinder like that. And they want to know why their minds get wrapped up in that. So that's not real life. That's not reality. Mm-hmm. And then they start thinking that all girls are like that as well, that all yep. girls want, you know, a six foot six, 250 pounds of muscle, no fat <laughs> whatsoever kind of guy. And they, they don't exist, man. And if they do exist, then they want the perfect woman. If a perfect guy exists, he's not going to be going for a mediocre woman. He's going to be going for the perfect That's woman it. himself. So, you know, you lose either way. And this is where you got to accept that. Most people aren't perfect. Well, no one is, because even the perfect person who has the perfect looks, the perfect hairline, guarantee that they're going to be insecure about something deep inside. They're going to have some sort of insecurity as well. Even the most beautiful woman in the world, the Kardashians, they're insecure. Howard Banks, top model, insecure. Everybody has insecure. I don't care how good they look, how perfect their life is. We all have insecurities. Exactly. We all got our demons, for sure. But yeah, man, it's been good talking to you. I mean, we've had a really good conversation, gone into not just balding, but, you know, insecurities in regards to this generation, Tinder, Instagram as well. So it's been really good to get into that. But before we kind of wrap things up, did you have anything in terms of advice that you wanted to give kind of to wrap things up? Did you want to kind of share anything with the audience who might be watching at home? Well, absolutely. I think guys who hesitate about it, especially with quarantine right now, if guys hesitate about it right now, I say just, if you want to start, just start with a buzz, a grade zero, start it off. You look in the mirror, that looks good. Keep it for about a couple months. Buzz it every couple of weeks and let it sit, resonate with you. Mm-hmm. What if you want to go shorter than that? Wet razor. I recommend doing that. Just start off. Don't hesitate at all. Of course, it's the perfect time to do it right now. Exactly. Take your head. Move on life. No matter what, you have no one else around you. It's the perfect time to do it. To take the first step. And moving on with life and focusing on bigger things in life, your goals and dreams. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, I would say that this is the perfect time as well, because even if you do it and you hate it, you're at home. You're going to be maybe with your mom, your dad, and maybe your partner, your wife, husband, whatever. You know, you're not going to be with anyone who, well, they shouldn't be judging you. So yeah. you've got nothing to lose. I'd agree with that. Absolutely. And no matter what your partner said, I know guys, I've seen them before. Guys who worry about their girlfriend and the other, what they don't think about it. I understand mm-hmm. that, but it's like, your significant others should understand that you shave your head is going to make yourself feel confident. Mm-hmm. And if that person doesn't like you anymore because you just shave your head and you transform yourself and make you more confident, you have to think twice about who your significant other is. Exactly. Your happiness should be come first as well. Exactly. It shouldn't be a case of just pleasing other people. If if they actually get to that point where their partners and their girlfriends, wives or whatever are actually looking at them and saying, no, you can't be shaving your head. You can't be, you know, I don't want none of that. I don't know. I don't want none of that with my partner. Then it is a case. You've got to reconsider who you're with because yeah. that just that just opens up a whole new can of worms about their true colors. It's true. Most women, most women, they care about. They don't, they don't care if you have hair or not. They want their most their partners and other is confident with themselves, moving forward in their life in direction. That's all I'm asking them, if you hair or not. Mm-hmm. That's the honest fact. Most women don't care if you got hair or not. Most women I meet, they don't care if I have hair or not. Some are attracted to you, some are not. But that's just a part of life. Mm-hmm. There's many skill sets that you can know. And to be fair, doing the dishes and cooking never hurts, guys. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But Justin, yeah, it's been it's been a real pleasure getting to know you and talking to you as well. I mean, I know you've been watching my videos, as I said, for a while, and you you're a re- you're a real loyal viewer in that sense and a supporter of mine. So you just know that you're valued in valued in this community. You're valued by me, and I'm happy to have you on the podcast as well, brother. Hey, thank you, family. Thank you for giving the value to others. That's what that's what inspired me. That's what made me so motivated. To you guys, like you, Harry, and other guys. Or giving other men bring value to the life that hey, men are gonna lose their hair, it's part of life. But here's some of the other skills that you have in life, like going to the gym, improving your fashion, learning a new skill. 
mm-hmm. no stuff that's going to matter in the long term. Short term, exactly. having hair, it's not, it's, not, it's not reality. Long term, we have a family life. Because when I'm 20, 20 years from now, when I'm 40 something, I'm not going to tell my son or daughter to have one day, yeah, you know, your father used to have a nice hairline, you know that? <laughs> I met all the other stuff I had. I used to have a nice hairline, you know that? 